Hello YouTube! <laughs> I know it might come as a shock uh, for some of you, especially those of you who are new to the channel and came here because the channel is called Living in a Van. Um, it may shock you to find out that I actually don't promote living in a van. <laughs> Far from that. I'm, I'm showing you what it's actually like living in a van, or was showing you what it was like living in a van, and uh, honestly, it sucks. Um, there may be some exceptions to when a person should live in a van or could live in a van and be happy, but for the majority of the population, the majority of people out there, I think van life um, would be a mistake. And I know some of you are arguing right now with me in your head, or maybe even at the YouTube screen, because you're perfectly happy living in a van. You're, you, you're part of the exception. I think for most van dwellers who are forced into the situation, let's say they decide they're, you know, they're um, planning on retiring and just moving into van and it's gonna be carefree um, and they're gonna be able to do all these things. Uh, so they move into a van without um, really too much planning because you know how hard how difficult could it be to, to live in a van well what a lot of people find when they move into a van is that it's not as glamorous as um, social media or YouTube or Facebook or whatever makes it appear now if you have money okay and you spend a lot of money building up a camper van to the point where it's like essentially a, what a class B RV. It's got everything in it um, and it's mechanically sound, it's in good shape, it's got a bathroom, it's got a kitchen, it's got everything. You essentially have an RV. So even though it still looks like a van and may be classified as a van, it's essentially an RV and it may make it a little bit more comfortable to live in something that's fully decked out like that but the reality is it's still a van and um, you're still susceptible to all the issues that come with living in a van and some of these issues that people aren't aware of until they actually live in a van it's just day-to-day -day survival um, just to give you some ideas of the kind of stuff that becomes a major deal um, with living in a van one of the most important is actually just sleeping. Yeah. Uh, a lot of times when you're living in a van, if you're living in a van and you're actually out full-time living, we're not talking about time, we're talking about full-time living in a van because you don't have a home, you don't have any place where you can safely park, you're out on the streets, basically. It's um, a rough life because you're constantly, every single day, looking for a parking spot. And um, once you get familiar with the area and you have a little routine going, you might have several parking spots, but you still gotta rotate. It's not as simple as, you know, if you have a house, you go to your house and you go to sleep. With uh, living in a van, if you're in a city, you have to stealth camp. So you're kinda hiding and parking, and honestly, stealth is kinda like a misnomer because by this point, cops and pretty much anyone who looks can spot a van dweller. It's, social media has glamorized it to the point where mainstream is now taking an interest in. I think certain people may be capitalizing on the van dwelling dream and actually selling a dream that's not a, re a realistic vision of what it's like to live in a van. But society as a whole, at least American society, I'm not sure how it is elsewhere in the world, kind of still looks down on van dwellers as being homeless people. And as a result, just living in a van, you get all sorts of calls. Usually calls to the police, and then the police come and knock on your window or your door. And most of the time, they're just, you know, checking on you, checking you out, but they'll ask you for your papers, your driver's license, ID, and all that other stuff. Um, and then a lot of times I'll just ask you to leave because somebody has called in and they think you're suspicious just simply because you're in a van. And it doesn't help if your van isn't like a nice new expensive van, if it's like a beat up van like mine. Um, 
Now, fortunately for me, I do have this YouTube channel, and people, you know, everywhere I have kind of seen it, especially around Florida and stuff, my roaming area, my regular area. So believe it or not, I, a lot of police officers know me already. <laughs> they know me and they haven't even met me in person, but they know me when they see my van um, parked somewhere and they knock on it. And a lot of times they already know me, you know. So they usually say hi or whatever and let me know they, they watch me. <laughs> I'm watching you. No, they, they're, they're pretty cool. But most of the time... Um, that's an issue, okay? Just trying to sleep. So, trying to find a, a parking spot where you won't be disturbed by the police. Now, if you're fortunate, which um, is in that latter case, well, I'll tell you where it's good to live in a van. You won't be living in a city and having to stealth park. You'll be traveling in your van and seeing all the scenic, beautiful sights, camping at um, BLM, BLM lands or national parks or... Um, maybe even on the beach somewhere, um, just planning, I mean, doing a road trip and, and having a, a grand time, the romanticized version of living in a van, okay? but I'm talking about the majority of van dwellers who are forced in this situation. You're probably not going to be traveling all the time unless you have a source of income that keeps coming in, whether it be retirement, your pension, disability, or something that allows you to travel um, in your van full time. In that case, van dwelling for you isn't as difficult as it is for somebody who lost their home and is essentially uh, would be homeless if not for having their van. So if you're one of the latter groups, uh, the groups that are financially sound and have money and stuff, this stuff that I'm talking about will not apply to you. So, you know, you don't need to say that it's not like that. It's not like that for you, but I think for the majority of the van dwellers, especially the ones who come to this channel, um, not because they're wanting to travel and stuff, but because they're being forced into it and trying to figure out how to survive, it's rough. So, sleeping, and you, you see I devoted so much time to it, is, is a major issue. Let's say you do park, and, and most people end up parking at Walmart, I don't know if you guys saw the story of that man who um, his van caught on fire because he, he threw some pillows on top of his stove that had been used to cook earlier and ended up burning and, and uh, killing those two, well, killed one of the girls that was parked in the van next to them. That kind of stuff can happen. It can happen to you while you're sleeping in your van. Think about that. That's why I always um, promote having a um, carbon monoxide detector, smoke detector, fire extinguisher in your van if you're living in it. Because even if you're safe, you're parked somewhere in a parking lot, the car next to you could be parked and running their engine and blowing carbon monoxide into your vehicle. You know? Or in that, that other case, the car next, the van that was parked next to the other car was on fire and the fire jumped over and caught the other car on fire. So you run that risk. And I know some of you say, well, you run that risk living in a house. Yeah, but you're not parked about two or three feet away from the other house. Generally, most, most houses, they have more than two or three feet of space. I don't know if you've seen how tight parking lots nowadays are. They uh, made the slots so tiny that um, vehicles barely have room to open their doors when they're parked in there. So that's an issue. The other part is just sleeping. You know, um, you do have the benefit of no matter where you sleep, if you're in your van and you seal it up, you feel comfortable because it looks like, you know, the same. But when you wake up, it's different. You're in a different location. And sometimes trying to sleep, especially if you're in a parking lot somewhere, all these noises start to occur. You've got um, people just coming and slamming their door, you know, their, their car. They park right next to you, and I told you how tight the parking spot was. They slam their door into your van with disregard. They don't give a hoot. And that wakes you up, and then, you know, if you step out there, you can give them a hard time, then they can end up calling the police, and you're in trouble because, well, you don't belong here, you know. Uh, and and police and, and cities tend to look at man dwellers almost as vagrants, um, as sad as I am to say that, but that's the reality. Um, if you're not a local, they tend to look down on you and um, can give you a hard time. 
So most of them, you know, when you, when you get those kind of encounters, generally if you if, if you stay calm and cool and collective and um, just respond to the police, you know, appropriately, you know, don't try to start stuff up. That's just stupid um, because he, he's got a gun <laughs> and he can haul you off. So you know, my my recommendation is try to cooperate. Um, you know, tell them the information they need. Uh, let them see your driver's license. Don't give them a hard time. But basically, most of the time, all they're going to do is just either A, leave you alone, which has happened. Sometimes they let me go back to sleep. You know, they just say, I just want to make sure you were okay, we were concerned. Somebody called in a suspicious van or vehicle, and we had to come check it out. You know, how long are you going to be here till? So, well, I'll leave now if you want, or I'll take a nap, and then I'll leave after I wake up. But um, basically, most police officers nowadays, unless they're living in a cave, they know van dwellers. They, they know that a lot of people are living in vans either by choice or by necessity. So don't think that you pull them on over on the cop. <laughs> Matter of fact, you know, some van dwellers are cops, ex-cops. So, okay. The other thing is, that becomes an issue, and, and I'm going down to the very basics, is just eating food. You know, what do you do for food? Well, there are van dwellers who say, well, I eat out all the time. Well, good for you. It's a good thing you have all that money. You know, it's expensive to eat out all the time, and the food you eat out may not be the best food. So, you're going to need a way of storing food, which can become an issue. Some people have all this money, and they can get like a solar, you know, a 400 to 1,000 watt solar power system with 200 to 400 amp hours, and a Dometic uh, refrigerator, freezer. You know, I'm not talking about those people. Those people have money. So, if you have money, that helps somewhat because essentially you have an RV. <laughs> but if you were like me and most people just on uh, the survival mode, um, eating can be kind of an issue, you know? you just trying to keep food refrigerated. Like, well, I just buy fresh stuff every day since I park at Walmart. Yeah, you do that. But the problem is a lot of places, they don't really make single serving size other than like Dollar Tree. So a lot of food you buy you have to kind of eat within a day or two. Even if you have like a little cooler, I have a, that little round, that little red cooler that I show in, in um, Little Blue, a lot of the cooking episodes and stuff. I can keep some food coat in there for like a day or two and I get free ice by getting the cupped ice from the gas station for free. I just, you know, you just go in there and ask them. Um, and bring your own cup, by the way. You know, the large 48 ounce cups with a lid. But bring it in and ask them if you can get ice, a lot of them will. I would say 95, 99% of them will say, sure, no problem. And if they charge, it's usually 25 cents or 50 cents for a cup. Uh, but anyhow, um, keeping your food cold is an issue, even if you have a little cooler like that. If, if you have another type of cooler where you have to keep buying ice, it gets expensive. You know, the average ice bag is about $2 a bag. You multiply that by, let's say the ice lasts two days, so that's 15 days, 15 times two, that's $30 just in ice, you know, every month. And that's just ice. And then include cooking the food and stuff. Good thing about ice like that is you do get water and water up to melts that you can use for washing and other stuff. So you can recycle that. And, so, and I cover that in some of the living episodes if you've been following this channel. So eating is an issue because let's say you do decide, well, I am going to cook my food. Then you've got to be able to cook. And you saw what happened or you heard of me already mentioned what can happen is that the van can catch on fire you know whenever you're cooking in a, a tiny space which is one of the reasons I, I tried to avoid cooking with a, a propane or a butane system for the longest time and then decided to get one just to show what it was like but my, my preferred cooking method really is um, the inverter cooking system where I cook using electricity and if you, you know, have followed this channel, you'll know how all that works and, and how I cook pretty much anything from steak to ribs to um, pork chops. I, I can make anything inside a rice cooker. I cook white rice, fried rice, whatever. Even um, ramen and lo mein noodles. Anything that you can cook almost, you can cook up in a rice cooker. So... Cooking with electricity is only slightly safer than cooking with um, fire because even with electricity, you can still um, heat things up and it can still catch on fire. 
So you always got to be very mindful of how you have your system set up and what happens when you shut it off and how, you know, hot things stay and you don't have anything that can touch it, that can catch on fire. But once you figure that out, okay, once you figure out how to sleep and how to eat and where to park, you're pretty much almost there. But then there's another big, big, big problem that occurs, okay? And it usually occurs for me, <laughs> and I guess for most people, right before they go to bed. You gotta go to the bathroom, right? So, some people get a little container and go in their bathroom, go to the bathroom in their van in a, um, like a five gallon paint jug. Some people have a portalette, like a, a dead fur, like a camp gear, toilet and stuff. Keep in mind, all this stuff has to fit in your van and sit there, and the smell doesn't magically go away. So if you're pooping in your van, <laughs> the smell's there, even if you don't think you smell it. Let me go, oh, I use cat kitty litter. I use cedar shavings. I use pine shavings. I use, yeah, it smells like pine shavings or kitty litter and human poop. It doesn't magically go away. So you are sleeping in it. You're eating in it. You're, you're coated in it. You stop smelling it but anyone else who steps into your van more than likely smells it. Now, in a minivan, that's especially hard to do, you know, to have room for a toilet. So, I always tried to park at a place where I had easy access to a bathroom pretty much whenever I needed to go, which usually meant like a 24-hour Walmart or some other 24-hour facility or out in the boonies, out in the woods somewhere where I could, you know, do my business. But that has its own thing if you're trying to go and do number two or even number one in the woods in the middle of the night because there are animals out there and mosquitoes and all sorts of bad things snakes spiders jaguars panthers you know panthers are jaguar I think I guess a panther you can call it a jaguar but anyhow um, that's another big thing it's just going to the bathroom and you know if you're a woman, it gets a little even more, a little complicated than men. With men, number number one, you know, you can simply do it into a jug, you know, a big, huge jug or bottle or something. And uh, women can do the same. Where they have this attachment you can get. You can find them now, um, at, like even at Walmart in the camping gear section. For those of you who don't know, it's, it's an attachment that a woman can put on herself, and then it allows her to pee standing up or squatting, but mostly standing up or leaning, you know, on your knees. Or like a guy would, but basically that can solve that. So number one isn't too bad, but it smells. I know some of you say, well, mine doesn't. Say, yes, it does, especially after it sits out a while. Because I think bacteria love that stuff. So if you live in a van, be prepared that you're going to stink. Your home's going to stink. And um, you'll stop smelling it. So you won't even know that you stink. Your vehicle smells like poo and pee, like a bathroom but other people will. So, one way to fix that, of course, is to air out your vehicle every day, which I do with the little minivan, you know. Not that I do number two in the van, except I did when I had the, uh, the portalet that I showed people how to build if you wanted one of those. But um, those are the basics, you know. Just survival is very hard. Um, being able to sleep, being able to cook and eat, being able to go to the bathroom. Then, of course, you've got uh, money, you know. It's like, if you're in that kind of situation, hopefully you're not unemployed. Now, if you follow this channel for any length of time, then you'll know that wasn't the case with me. I had to break, I broke up with my um, girlfriend, which is what set off the sequence of me living in the man this round. And um, I was unemployed. You know, I had just gotten out of that accident um, where my back was all messed up and was unemployed and I had like three dollars in my pocket and YouTube wasn't really earning income at that point. It earned like $75 over three months. So, you know, it wasn't really anything. It's hard, you know. Um, so a lot of van dwellers end up getting social services like food stamps. But really, if you're on food stamps, you're not making that much money. 
you know, you're not making enough to take care of yourself for all year. You're requiring uh, government assistance to help you, which means you're not able to sustain yourself. And that's not a good thing. You know, it's, um, it's not something I would look down upon because if you have to do it, you have to do it. You know, you need to try to survive. In my case, I, I don't get any government assistance like that. I can't. I don't want to. I, I can't because of, um, it's complicated. I talk about it and nothing. But just, just know this. Not everyone who lives in a van can get government assistance even though they qualify. And I qualify on a lot of different fronts, but I, I don't utilize any government assistance. So that makes it super, super hard. So then you're, you're kind of forced to buy foods that are cheap, okay? And that means buying really bad stuff. Not bad, but not the best stuff. And mostly processed foods. Now, I, I will give you some tips, and I, I'm not going to give it all on this video and stuff because there's other videos that we've produced in the past where you can buy food, but um, for an economical price, decent food, real food. But most of the time, if you're a van dweller, you end up buying stuff in smaller portions and single servings, you know. Um, and a lot of van dwellers love Dollar Tree because Dollar Tree has the smaller portions, which is great for a van dweller. But the problem with Dollar Tree is you're seldom, I've never really seen fresh stuff at Dollar Tree. It's mostly processed stuff. You know, it's, the, it's always processed stuff, as far as I can tell. So you're going to get all these processed foods instead of natural foods. Um, and it's at least a dollar, usually at least a dollar per item. So eating dinner could be, you know, a couple of dollars, two or three dollars. That's cheaper than going out to eat, which could run you anywhere from, if you went to a cheap burger place, fast food, you're looking at about six or eight dollars per meal. And if you go to a restaurant, you're looking at about eight to twenty dollars per meal, you know, with tips and everything else uh, associated with eating out. So eating in can be as low as two to three dollars for like a dinner, a nice dinner, but it's not the best food. Now you could buy meats and stuff and split it, you know, and have it go out over the course of several days or a week. If you have access to a way of preserving the meat, a way of saving the meat so it doesn't go bad. And in a van, unfortunately, unless you have a freezer, refrigerator hookup, it's not that easy. Some of you are like, well, I'll just get a refrigerator freezer hookup. Well, it's not that simple, see. One, if you want to get a dedicated system, you know, that's designed for RVs and vans and stuff like that, they tend to be super expensive. Like you're talking four hundred to eight hundred dollars for a refrigerator, and it's not even that big. It's like the size of a, a, a ice chest, you know, a small cooler. That's how much space you have, and you're paying like six or eight hundred or even a thousand dollars for that. I'm like, well, I'll just save up for that. Yeah, but then you got to power it. So, you know, unless you're one of those people who are fortunate enough to have a house or you know, a friend or some place where you can park that gives you access to electricity, 120 volts, 220, 240, whatever your, your country standard electricity is, um, and running water and stuff, it is very difficult. You know, just even getting water. You can save money by um, refilling water at gas stations and things like that, or um, you know, paying 25 cents to get filtered water a gallon just get tap water and not or bother to have it filtered you know you, know, you don't care you know, we're gonna save a couple save a, a quarter or something but um, basically things that people take for granted become difficult like let's say you want to do it you want to take a shower well there's another problem again now you know this channel has shown you how you could take showers on the beach if you happen to live in a place like Florida which has beach access all over the place along the beach, along the coast. But if you are um, in a city or not close to the beach and stuff, you're kind of screwed. You know, you have to either come up with the money to join like a gym or something, and then you have to drive over to that gym to take a shower there, you know. And, and I, I recommend that actually because you, you get a nice hot shower. You can shower as long as you want. 
some of the gyms even have, depending on the plan you go on, like we have a, a black card at Planet Fitness, they may have a lounge where you can sit down on a nice sofa and watch TV, watch cable TV, satellite TV, whatever. Get internet access and sit there and surf and stay there for hours. You know, and they even have, sometimes those places even have like pizza night. <laughs> you can get pizza, yeah. So it may be worth it, you know. I, definitely worth it, I think, even though there's some, it's kind of scammy how they do things. The, the way they do the fees, which I may complain about on a later episode, but um, joining a, a gym like Planet Fitness, 24 Hour Fitness, uh, any of the gyms that are nationwide that let you go into another facility is worth it if you travel. If you don't travel, you can join the local gym, you know, whether it be uh, Gold's Gym or whatever. Uh, but see, the, the problem is. Unless you're parked out at that parking lot all day long, whenever you want to shower or use the bathroom there, you have to drive there. And it doesn't seem like an issue until you're having to do it every day. Because when you're having to do it every day, you're putting wear and tear on your vehicle and you're burning through gas, which means you're burning through money. So living in a van is not the panacea that everyone thinks it is. Um, it doesn't. It doesn't save you money completely it's it's less expensive than living in a house or an apartment or even an rv park um, where you have to pay a monthly rent you know or a mortgage payment but it's not as cheap as you think because having to drive everywhere means you're probably going to spend more money on gasoline than you were used to and putting all that wear and tear on your vehicle means that there may be more more mechanical breakdowns and of course the risk for accidents because you know, you're on the road all the time um, jumps up and and I'm not even including comfort levels you know now my van used to not have working air conditioning until Marcello kindly uh, fixed it he did it for free you know so uh, Marcello is a mechanic in this area who uh, I'm trying to coordinate with especially try to get involved get him involved with the pay it forward channel if I can but you know it's dependent upon what he feels and whether or not he wants to do it but I'm trying not just get Marcello I'm trying to find a bunch of Marcellos but I I'm, I'm, I, I'm sorry I'm straying but that's one of the plans for pay it forward is to hook up people who have skills and resources and stuff that want to help um, those who, who are in need but living in a van if you watch this channel at all, if you if you hope to live in a van, you plan to live in a van, and you think the living in a van is going to make your life better, okay, I suggest you follow my vlogs, especially from day one, and watch all the stuff of me, like waking up in 20 degrees, freezing, shivering, trying to figure out how to stay warm, or, um, you know, stay cool when it's Florida had been like over 100 or 96 degrees at night. And the vehicle's hot, air doesn't want to blow through. You're, you're, you're roasting while you sleep. You know, you can get heat stroke. Um, you can die in your van from heat stroke. And nobody would even know. You'd, you'd rot and stink in the Walmart parking lot for a couple months until somebody notices all the flies and buzzards hanging out on your vehicle. But, um, you know, and you think I'm kidding, but that's true. You know, just Google all that stuff and you're going to see it comes up. It's not. The glamorous life that um, some people paint it out to be. So I'm putting this out there because I don't want to dissuade people from living in a van because I'm going to do a follow-up video here. The next video will be about you know the good things about living in a van and why or when you should live in a van. According to me, you know that's just my my opinion. Um, just like this is just my opinion, but it's not just a, a baseless opinion. It's from not been about 10 years of man dwelling experience so I've been living in a van on and off for 10 years and this last round was like three years straight um, right now I'm living in the RV which is similar to the van but a million times better well a thousand times better not a million a thousand times better which we'll talk about some of the um, benefits of living in an RV versus living in a van well I hope you found this information useful um, you know, those are the major things. Just very basic survival becomes exponentially hard. And um, if you're forced to live in a van, this channel, 
I hope is a valuable resource because it shows you what you can do and how you can survive. But if you have a choice of whether to live in a van or to try to get into uh, government assistant housing, um, moving in with your family members, uh, moving in with friends, trying to get yourself reset without moving into a vehicle, I recommend doing that. Moving into a vehicle makes things harder, like even uh, getting a job could become harder because you don't have that stability, you know. You you don't, you're not like a, you're not really sure where you're going to park each night or that it's going to be okay that night or that the cops aren't going to disturb you at 2 a.m. or that whatever, that, you know, the rain and, and the sun and the snow and, and all the elements that you are protected from when you're living in a, a house become very, very much a part of your natural, everyday um, things that you have to overcome. So, I don't recommend living in a van um, if you have other options. If you don't have other options, living in a van is better than living on the street, under a bridge, sleeping on a park bench, sleeping on the beach. I know those all sound romantic while well, sleeping on the beach. And all the others may not sound so romantic, but um, living in a van isn't romantic. It can be, and there are parts of it that can be, but if you're forced to do it, if you're contemplating doing it because you think it's uh, glamorous and it's, it's easy, you're going to be in for a shock. And it may be too late because if you get rid of everything and all your resources and stuff, and you're in a van, you're pretty much in a van at that point. You're homeless. So don't put yourself into that situation unless you don't have another choice. That's my advice. Um, and that's not just something I'm saying. It is from actual experience. Although, you know, I'll be honest. There are good points to living in a van. And we're going to be talking about that in the next video. Uh, on what are, what are the good points, the benefits of living in a van. And when or why should someone live in a van? You know, this video is about why you shouldn't. And you shouldn't if you have other options, you know, versus becoming homeless. Because choosing living in a van, if you don't have the money and stuff and the resources that would make living in a van an option that you can leave at any moment, um, it becomes kind of a one path down to a dead end. Unless you're fortunate enough to somehow get out. So, I myself am working to get out of living in a van. <laughs> in case you haven't figured it out. And I'm trying to work my way back to living in a house. Sort of. But I'll talk some more about that later. So, until next time, everyone. Thank you for joining me. I hope you found this video interesting, if not informative. I hope you'll give this video a thumbs up. Share it. Um, like the video. Subscribe to it. And help to promote this video on this channel if you appreciate the information that's being put out there. I hope that um, videos like this will help to counteract those videos that glamorize uh, van life that doesn't really exist. You know, I mean, it, it only exists for Instagram or for a few minutes if you're faking it. You know, it's easy to, to make van life glamorous. I can fake it. If you, you know, if you guys would like to see me make a fake video, I'll make one that's really good. Well, not good. But I have a hot babe and all that stuff that look all glamorous, but um, it's not real. It's not real. Although it probably would generate a lot of views. Well, I'm going to sign out for now because it is time for me to go. So until next time, everyone, take care. God bless you all. Please stay safe. Thank you for tuning in. Bye-bye now.